Hello and welcome to this quick overview of AutoChartist's performance statistics. Most people who come in contact with AutoChartist are either referred by their online broker or by friends or family members. We rely on the good quality of our product to let its general adoption and use be spread around by word of mouth by the people who are using it themselves because our customers are our best sales representatives. See on our website for some of the great testimonials that our clients have left for us. This may be all good and well, but if a cautious trader is introduced to auto charters for the first time, he or she will invariably ask the question, so does it really work? Many people nowadays don't have the time to first test drive an application or service before they subscribe to it. That is why we've introduced our own performance statistics straight into the application itself to answer the question on a continual basis, how well is auto charters doing? The results are transparent and updated on a weekly basis, although the numbers do not change dramatically from week to week, since the performance stats are measured over a minimum of at least 6 months. I want to show you in this video where to find it, how to read and interpret the results, and how they are calculated. Let's start at the where. In your AutoChartist application, click on the Performance Statistics tab. You'll notice that there are three columns of stats broken down by exchange or instrument type, for example Forex or New York Stock Exchange or Commodities. So you can click on any of the buttons to draw a report that is specific to that exchange or type of instrument and for that particular analysis type. I want to just quickly stand still for a second at what types of analysis we have performance stats on. You'll notice that we have separate columns for key level breakouts and approaches and one for completed chart patterns. The reason why we don't have a column for Fibonacci patterns is because there is simply no computationally efficient way for us to determine whether a Fibonacci pattern has been successful. I'm not suggesting that it's not possible to code, I'm just saying we don't have the kind of resources at our disposal to do it effectively at this time. Now if I click on any of the buttons, each would bring up a report in the same format. It would just be the underlying data set that the report is based on that would be different for every button. Do take note of the very last one which is inconspicuously named ALL and encompasses the overall statistics of the entire data set for whatever instruments are available on your version of AutoChartist. The report is essentially a measurement of the number of successful patterns broken down by specific classes of attributes that allows the reader to spot areas of higher or below average performance. The first thing I need to clarify is the definition of success. When do we regard a pattern to have been successful? To illustrate it visually, I have taken a simple completed pattern and measured the pattern length from where it started to where it was identified. Now if you take this same length and apply it to the target level, this becomes the area of success. If the price goes anywhere inside this green block, we consider the pattern to have been successful. So the report contains some basic information in case you want to print it out for your own records so you'll know what you're looking at. This particular report is for Forex for the period 28 November till 23rd of May. That's the past six months. And the organization field is just a reference to your broker through whom you have access to AutoChartist. The big green numbers are the total number of patents that were evaluated and the number of patents that were successful. And that is expressed below as a percentage. Then the rest of the report is summarized in the table of contents and each attribute by which performance is broken down is listed here. It's an HTML report so you can click on it as a hyperlink. Let's take patterns for example. From this we can quickly see that head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders are great performers, while falling wedges have not done so well for Forex. Note that we deliberately included the number of patterns in each sample set so that you can evaluate the significance of each percentage. If you look at double tops and bottoms, the 100% is a score of 3 out of 3 and the 50% is 1 out of 2. Neither of these can be regarded with much confidence really. Contrast that with 52 out of 61, which is a much more credible score of 85%. The symbols we've included 
are the ones with the highest number of successful patterns. So it's the top 50 or so sorted by this column. Lower down in the report, we see some two-dimensional breakdowns, putting together, for example, patterns and intervals. From this we see that for channel downs, we have more success on end-of-day intervals than shorter intervals. These two-dimensional breakdowns do not include the total pattern counts, mainly just to keep the information readable. All the other breakdowns in the report are just different variations on these two themes, so now you should be able to make sense of it on your own. We urge you to use these statistics cautiously and wisely, not to jump to any conclusions that contains an expectation of easy money. You should be aware of the risks involved and view these stats as an academic breakdown of past achievements. It cannot reliably predict future outcomes. I hope this has been a useful video. Thank you for watching it and as always, best of luck with your trading.